हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली के कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द सिंगल मोड लेजर्स सो व्हाट इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द सिंगल मोड व्हाट इज द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ द सिंगल मोड हाउ वी कैन गेट द सिंगल मोड ऑपरेशन इन द लेजर्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ वी कैन हैव द ग्रेटिंग स्ट्रक्चर एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ ग्रेटिंग स्ट्रक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू स्टडी थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सिंगल मोड लेजर्स फर्स्ट इज द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड फीडबैक लेजर डी एफ बी लेजर देन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ब्रैग रिफ्लेक्टर लेजर राइट डी बी आर लेजर एंड देन द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड रिफ्लेक्टेड लेजर सो दीज आर द थ्री लेजर्स विच वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी इन डिटेल इन द सिंगल मोड लेजर्स सो फर्स्ट वॉट इज द सिंगल मोड लेजर्स ऑब्वियसली विच इज गिविंग मी वन सिंगल मोड वन सिंगल लॉन्गिट्यूडनल मोड और वन सिंगल ट्रांसवर्स मोड राइट सो दिस इज माई सिंगल मोड लेजर नाउ कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द सिंगल मोड लेजर इज कॉम्प्लेक्स और इजी It is a bit complex than the multi-mode laser. Let's understand how. What is the advantage of using the single-mode laser? Right, single-mode lasers are giving me the higher powers, so these can communicate over a longer distance. Right, so it is going to give me high speed, long distance communication. So this is the best advantage of using the single-mode lasers. As I told you, here we have the single. longitudinal mode or single transverse mode now when i have only single mode the line width is going to decrease and we are going to get a narrower beam so we will be having the narrow spectral width as well now the single mode how it is achieved so this is the biggest question how we are going to get the single mode single mode is achieved by reducing the length of the resonator cavity right so by reducing the length to a point now where i am going to reduce the length if in the resonator cavity i am going to reduce the length of the resonator cavity i know the length of the resonator cavity is proportional to the frequency separation delta frequency so if i have different frequencies on the different frequencies i will be having the different modes now if i increase l i will be having less frequency separation if i decrease l right if i decrease l so frequency spacing is going to increase right so if i increase the frequency spacing in the given gain uh, bandwidth graph i will be having only some of the frequencies which are giving me some only some of the modes right so we are going to reduce the l to the point where frequency spacing of the adjacent mode is larger than the laser transition line width and when the frequency spacing is greater than the laser transition line width then what will happen only one mode would be present right so only single longitudinal mode will fall between the given gain bandwidth graph i already told you how the gain bandwidth graph was there and if only one longitudinal mode is present in the gain bandwidth graph i will be having only one mode of operation but there would always be buts <laughs> so now when i have only single mode when i decrease the length then the fabrication becomes really complex so let's understand this thing with the help of an example so we have already talked about the fabry parrot resonator right so if the length of the fabry parrot resonator is 250 micrometer then the mode spacing is 1 nanometer at 1 nanometer gap i am going to get the different frequencies and at the different frequencies i am going to get the different modes but if i decrease the length to 25 micrometer i am going to get the mode spacing to 10 nanometer so it is increased 10 times right so if i decrease the length 10 times mode spacing is increased 10 times and also the power is reduced power is reduced to few milliwatts only and then when the power is reduced so much the fabrication becomes really complex now we have some alternate structures i cannot decrease the length very much so i am moving towards the alternate structures now what are the alternate structure we have the vcl structure or which is also called the vcsel structure what is this vertical cavity surface emitting laser right we have vertical cavity over here 
and it is going to emit from the surface. Now here we have the built-in frequency selective grating. The frequency selective grating is going to give me only one mode, right? So here we have the tunable lasers as well. We can tune it to the dif different frequencies or different modes along the different frequencies. So in the tunable laser, only one frequency can be tuned and a mode along that frequency can be achieved. So in the tunable laser also we can achieve the single mode operation. Now in the VCL, we have the perpendicular light emission. We have the vertical cavity and we have the perpendicular light emission which is uh, useful for the wavelength division multiplexing application. So it can be easily used for the wavelength division multiplexing application. Here we have smaller active region, we have smaller threshold current which means I will want less power for its operation and increased bandwidth so the speed would be high. So these are very good type of lasers. Now we are moving towards another category which is the frequency selective reflector. In the frequency selective reflector right here we are using the reflector surface to select the frequencies with the help of the difference in the refractive index. So here we have corrugated grating. Corrugated grating are these kind of grating surfaces right so these are the corrugated grating which are passive waveguide layers which are adjacent to the active layer so here we have this to be my active layer adjacent to the active layer we have the passive waveguide structure so you can see this is active layer over which we have the passive waveguide structure so this is having the corrugated grating now it is having the operation which is based on the distributed Bragg face grating reflector right so we will be having the periodically changing structure periodically changing refractive index which is based upon the distributed Bragg phase grating refractor in the phase grating what we do we are periodically varying the refractive index you can see here we are changing the refractive index right so we are periodically varying the refractive index which is going to give me the counter propagating traveling waves right so now we will be having the maximum coupling when we have the Bragg's wavelength or when we have the lambda b at the Bragg wavelength I am going to get the maximum coupling now what is the Bragg's wavelength so Bragg's wavelength lambda b is equal to 2 and e this is the sign which represents the period of corrugation right what is the period from one starting to another ending so this is the period when the one grating start and now here it is ending so this is the period and it is re represented by this symbol so this is the period of the grating right so now here we have lambda b what is the Bragg's wavelength Bragg's wavelength will be 2 and e and is the effective refractive index k is the order of the grating now generally we are choosing k is equal to 1 at the k is equal to 1 we are going to get the best of the output but sometimes because at the k is equal to 2 the fabrications become simpler so sometimes we are choosing k is equal to 2 as well so at k is equal to 1 we are going to get the maximum coupling and if it is possible to fabricate the device at k is equal to 1 we are going to fabricate it at k is equal to 1 which is the order of the grating so we are going to choose the order of the grating to be 1 only so this is going to give me a good single mode operation and it is going to give me less sensitivity to the drive current and the temperature variation if I change the temperature if I change the drive current I will be having less effect on this type of structure so now in the frequency selective reflector or in the Bragg phase grating reflector we have three type of structure first is the DFB reflector which is the distributed feedback reflector right DFB lasers and here we have the grating for the lambda selection is done all over the active region so you can see this is the DFB laser in the DFB laser this grating is present from this end up till this end right here at the lowest end we have the substrate over which we have and type gallium aluminium arsenide which is the confining layer right I hope now you understood the operation of the confining layer which we have already talked in the previous video now over that we have the n-type gallium aluminium arsenide which is the guiding layer 
then we have the p type gallium arsenide so in the gallium aluminium arsenide structure we have the gallium arsenide active layer over which we have the passive wave, wave guide of the p type gallium aluminium arsenide and over which we have the confining layer of p type gallium aluminium arsenide right so now here you can see this grating are present on the entire selective region right from here up till here we have the grating in the dfb laser now the ideal dfb lasers in the ideal dfb lasers the longitudinal modes are spaced symmetrically right so if i talk about the different modes so if i see the intensity of light at the different modes at the zero intensity i am going to get a very high peak and at some of the uh, modes at the different frequencies i am going to get a very low peaks so this is how i can say i am just working on this mode right at this frequency i am working which is going to give me a very high peak right but these modes are also present now these modes are present symmetrically in the ideal dfb laser so now it is present symmetrically around the wavelength lambda b right so here lambda b is the bragg's wavelength which we can find out using this formula right so now here lambda is related to lambda b as lambda is equal to lambda b plus minus lambda b square upon 2e to any le any is the effective refractive index le is the length of the cavity m plus 1 by 2 where m is the 0 1 2 which is the mode number right so m represents the mode number so now amplitude of the higher order lasing modes are greatly reduced you can see here this is the one mode and this is a zero order mode so you can see higher order modes are having very less amplitude than the zero order modes so at m is equal to 1 we have the 30 db down amplitude than the m is equal to 0 mode so the 30 db down means it is very less as compared to m is equal to 0 mode so now randomness of the cleaving process if i have various randomness present in the cleaving process then it is going to give me better results right so if i have very symmetrical output then i am not going to get the single mode operation so if the reflector surface reflecting mirrors are present reflecting mirrors are present on the both of the surfaces very precisely and very good reflector surfaces are present then sig single mode operation is not possible but if i have asymmetric reflections which means we have higher randomness then we will be lifting the degeneracy when we are lifting the degeneracy in the model gain i will be getting the single mode operation so if i have higher asymmetry i will be having the high reflective coating on one end and low reflective coating on another end so this is how i can increase the single mode operation of the dfb lasers i hope you understood this thing so now coming to the distributed bragg reflector so which is also called the dbr reflector so now here you can see this is a grating grating is present only in the passive region in the pumped region the grating is not present so here you can see gratings are located at the end of normal active layers of laser to replace the cleaved end mirrors in fabry parrot resonator right so here at the ends only of the normal active layer of the laser this is the active layer again this is a confinement layer over which we have the guidance layer and then we have the active layer then the passive wave guide and over which the confining layer so above the active layer we have the passive wave guide and grating are located at the end of the normal active layer these are the ends at the end we have the grating of the laser to replace the cleaved end right if i want to replace the cleaved end i will be providing the grating at the ends so this is the structure of distributed bragg reflector now coming to the distributed reflected laser which is better than both of them now it is going to improve the efficiency it is going to improve the output capability so you can see the active region is present only from this point up to this point right so here it is going to improve the lasing property of dfb as well as dbr laser we can use the distributed reflected laser in both dfb and dbr laser so we can have full grating or we can have the grating only present in the passive region only so it can be worked as dfb or dbr laser and we can have a, a small area active layer right so it is going to have active and passive distributed 
reflectors i hope you understood all of them if you have any doubt in any of the topics you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and give me your feedback thank you so much